Some will say our sense of urgency is misplaced. Some will say that we're spending too much. To them, I ask this. Did you, you, did you lose your job during a COVID lockdown? Were you reluctantly let go by your small business employers who were like a family to you, but simply could not afford your salary any longer? Are you worried you'll be laid off in this third wave? Finance Minister Christia Freeland inside the House of Commons defending some of the big spending put forward in today's budget. It's her first budget, and as we've said all day long, the federal government's first in over two years. So is this the plan that Canadians need right now? Will the opposition parties buy in? Sounds like it, but let's see. We're some of them anyway. It's Monday. I'm back with a special edition of At Issue. Chantelle Hebert, Andrew Coyne, Althea Raj. I'll start with you, Andrew, on the spending side. Is this is this too much for right now, or is this what's needed for stimulus? Well, if, if you read the budget and you listen to that quote from Christopher Freeland, you'd wonder whether this was April 21, 2021 or April 2020. She's using the past year when everybody agreed the government needed to increase spending uh, in enormous amounts to try to keep people whole, uh, to justify future permanent spending that's got nothing to do with the recession, nothing to do with, pan with the pandemic. If you look at, if you compare this budget to the, the fall economic statement six months ago, they're proposing to spend $20 billion annually, basically in perpetuity, more than they were previously projecting. If you compare it back to the budget of 2019, two years ago, the last budget, it's $50 billion more annually. Um, if you could make an argument, at least, an arg you know, if you can disagree about it, but you can make an argument about whether you're going to pr propose to spend $100 billion more on stimulus at a time when the economy is growing slowly. And again, the government sometimes talks that way, but its own numbers belie it. The economy is actually going great guns right now, it's, and it's projected to grow even faster in the next year or two. They don't need the stimulus, so what they've done is simply ditched the label and kept the spending. They've repurposed it to spend on all kinds of other things that liberals have wanted to spend on for years. And there's this lingering echo of, well, this has got something to do with the pandemic or something to do with the recession. And it quite clearly doesn't. It's got a lot to do with ideology and even more to do with the on oncoming election. OK, Chantal, your, your thoughts, because it, you, you could also suggest I, I might I might say that it's addressing some issues that have been exposed during the pandemic. And that uh, main issue would be child care. Really, uh, I don't think the pandemic exposed the child care issue. I believe it was always there. And Andrew is right on one point. They are spending like a government in surplus when they are running record deficits. Uh, but to the election point, 270 measures. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a federal budget that was 800 pages long and had 270 uh, measures, how could you not please someone with 270 plus measures? This is the kind of budget that uh, no one is going to want to campaign against. Uh, and I'm guessing that's the main point. As for the child care issue, it is the biggest federal investment in child care that we have seen. But mm -hmm. that investment does not happen unless provinces buy in. Not all provinces will buy in, and none will really buy in in a way that creates childcare spaces before Canadians go to the polls. Um, okay, Althea, your, your thoughts on the, on the size of the spending and whether it's needed? It's a whole lot of money. <laughs> um, I, I think where you stand on, uh, if it, is it too much or is it not enough, really depends more on your ideology than... Sure. Uh, anything else. And frankly, uh, I'm of two minds, like I'm on so many political questions. But I agree with Chantal. I think that, you know, one thing and we, that we mentioned this during the, the budget special, but uh, Minister Freeland has staked her credibility on getting child care done. She's repeated this as a promise as a working mother, as a first female finance minister. And in the budget, it says it's going to be a 50-50 split. Now, the province is knowing that Minister Freeland has staked her credibility on this. Who is going to agree to 50-50 split? No, Ottawa is going to have to fess up a lot more money than they think, I think, to get this plan done. Um, I would also say that uh, one thing that is remarkable is how this uh, budget document for the 700 plus pages that it is, close to 800, there is, it really lacks transparency. There is no prudent fund, you know, that contingency mm -hmm. fund that we Reserve used to fund. see. Yeah, yeah. 
not there at all, even though in the introduction of the budget, it says that the forecast is uh, highly, um, you know, it, it can fluctuate. Private yeah. sector forecasters are all over the map. They know there's a high degree of uncertainty. Still, with that warning, there is no prudence fund in there. I was speaking with Scott Clark. We're each allowed to have an expert in this virtual lockup. He used to be the ADM, several ADMs at finance and the DM there. And he was telling me that he would give this budget an F on um, on prudence, a C on transparency, and a C on whether or not it's realistic. Because, the, I mean, the Tories used to mock uh, the Liberals, Justin Trudeau, for saying the budget was, would balance itself. This budget, the only way they get to where they get at the end is because it balances itself. The growth far surpasses uh, the program spending. And um, Minister Freeland still has a not... Uh, said whether or not she believes that the government should get back into the black or if they plan to run deficits forever. OK, OK, but but the, the, the pol it speaks to the politics of it, Andrew, because part of this is now that we are dealing with a conservative leader who said he's not interested in balancing the budget, balancing the budget for the next decade or, or doesn't think it can be done. Uh, it becomes difficult to to see what they go sharp on here and, wh and how they attack the government on this. Well, I, I, know I can't speak for Tory strategy, yeah. except yeah. I can say, talking about balancing the budget in 10 years, when the government itself, even with all of its spending, uh, is projecting it to be close to balance in five yes. or six years. I mean, 1% of GDP is not that far off. Uh, I think they may, may need to want to revise that. They, there's a lot that the opposition could do that doesn't amount to, quote unquote, austerity. For one thing, there's a serious need that the government has not addressed for a growth agenda. The only way we're really going to deal with our long run deficit and debt problems is not in, I mean, this, the short term is only the half of it. The longer term is much more pressing. And it's not just pressing at the federal level, but at the provincial level, where they're dealing with health care costs that are going out of, you know, they're already at 50% of their revenues or near, near about. So we need to get the economy on a much higher growth track. It's only going at about 1.5% of GDP per, per year in the GDP right now. Uh, there's a lot of measures you could talk about that will be controversial, but that will be different and will change the subject from just, are you in favor of spending everything the Liberals want to spend it on? So that's point one. Point yeah. two is, I think there's a serious debate to be had, not about the necessity of daycare or childcare, but about which particular model you want to, want to pursue on it. The model that the Liberals are pushing, the Quebec model, is one that is, has particular benefits, but particular costs and particular disadvantages, particularly if you don't uh, work hours, for example, that match those of the daycare operators, or if you prefer to put your child in a different kind of daycare than the ones that the government is, is pursuing. Uh, I think it would be very good to have a large debate about that as a country, particularly when the government is proposing to plunge the provinces uh, into the, an enormous fiscal commitment that, frankly, when the provinces are crying for health care, health care funding rather than, than a new, a, a completely new shared cost program. Okay, Chantal wants in, yep. Hmm. Um, about the details on child care, it depends on the provinces. Uh, I don't think that uh, there are many parents outside Quebec who have kids in child care who would argue that they are not paying enough or that they would like to have more money in pocket, that has been tried and failed. So at the end of the day, I, I, you can have this discussion, but I don't think we can have a discussion about the shape of childcare in a federal election in the sense that it is essentially a provincial issue. So the federal government is putting all that money in the window. The people who are going to be on a hot seat on this are not going to be uh, federal politicians saying mm -hmm. we're willing to give money to get mm -hmm. that done. They're going to be called Ford and, and Pallister and Horgan and Legault. That is where it is. Now, there is a reason why the most popular social program in Quebec is the, child, the affordable universal child care program. Not enough uh, spots is the issue, not a, an ideological or a, 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 a battle over, I would rather have my kids in yeah. this and that. Last word to you, Althea. I don't think any political party is going to be campaigning against child care, especially considering that the Liberals are not getting rid of the child, the monthly child care payments to get there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, child care is immensely popular. Uh, it is a, a crisis issue in many urban centers that are swing ridings across this country. That is just not going to happen. OK, you guys, thank you. Thank you for coming in on, on Monday. Guess what? You'll be back still on Thursday. Doesn't mean you get a pass on Thursday. <laughs> so we'll talk then. For now, though, it's back to Adrian and Andrew in Toronto.